I'm super happy to be here with, with John Guerra. Uh, John is an incredibly gifted singer and songwriter. John and his wife Val um, came down and uh, over with us over a couple Christmases ago in 2017 and 2018, and they um, performed and it was it was wonderful Christmas music. John has been a worship worship leader in Chicago and performed around the world, taking his songs to people who are thirsty for putting words of hope in their and their prayers um, to God. So John, I love how you describe yourself as, as you say, I'm a singer songwriter who writes devotional music, less Sunday morning worship music and more Monday morning prayer music. Devotional music is a collaboration with quiet. It's music for attending to the soul and for listening to God. I love that. And it's good to be with you. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to see you. Yeah, well, last time we talked, you were in Chicago. You were a part-time worship leader at a church, and you were also performing at churches and conferences around the world. Fill us in on what you've been up to since then. Yeah, we were a part of a church in Chicago. Uh, we kind of felt God calling us away from that. It, it, um, my wife and I had a baby, and so we were moving out of our apartment. I was um, about to release a new album, and it was just kind of the timing just felt like, hey, let's... Um, it, you know, what do you have for us, God? And then I, I was offered an opportunity to work on music for a movie with this director. It's the second time I've worked with this director um, down here in Austin, Texas. So we decided with a four-month-old in tow to move across the country right before, you know, a worldwide pandemic hit. Um, and we moved down here and everybody was like, hey, we're all going to stay in our houses for four months. So... <laughs> John, you went through a pretty high-profile situation at your last church in Chicago. You had a senior pastor who was forced to step down. You were a, a kind of a bystander in all this. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and how you, as a worship leader, continue to lead people through that kind of scenario? Where, you know, where do you go to keep singing? You know, out of all that. Yeah, such an unfortunate situation. Um, just a reminder that God um, is bigger than our institutions. God is bigger than the leaders that he entrusts with his gospel. Um, when we call ourselves a Christian, we are carrying the reputation of Jesus Christ with us to our coworkers, to our families, to our, you know, an unbelieving world is looking when we call ourselves Christians and they, they, they look at us and they say, Oh, I wonder what their God is like. And they look at us and, and God's fine with that. He's not ashamed to be called our God. Isaiah says, um, and in a situation like that, you just kind of were like, God, why? You know, just especially in the Chicago area, there was so much, several, a couple different churches, pretty high profile breakdowns. And it was kind of like, if I was God, I would not want to be associated with what was happening here. But, you know, through the course of nine, 10 months, um, having to get up and lead worship along with the other worship leaders, there were several weeks where you're kind of like, okay, um, I really just, the last thing I want to do is get up with my guitar and sing some songs. But you'd show up and you'd look into the faces of the people and it's almost like the Holy Spirit was like, hey, I, you know, I'm still here. Christ is still on the throne. You know, God is still worthy to be, pre these things that we say and we sing about become more real in moments of crisis and in moments of strife and in moments of suffering. And in moments of um, how many times was David's sorrow and David's sin turned into praise? Um, that's a really beautiful concept. It's something else entirely when you actually have to do it as a as a community, as a body that has, um, you know, that, that is feeling the weight of of things. So honestly, it was it was really hard, but I wouldn't I, I wouldn't trade that experience really for anything. It's the work of the people coming together, and where there are two or more, God is there. It's like I'm, I'm. There's nothing fancy about that. It's literally just let's get together, and and consider God, and then boom, suddenly there's something that's there, and it doesn't take a PhD. It doesn't take any form of eloquent giftedness. It takes nothing. It just takes faith and God and people, and it's like praise the Lord because if it was anything more, we'd screw it up. But because it's just that, I know that, you know. We're going to be okay. To, um, songwriters often act as prophets. Uh, they're searching for words and feelings about the current culture and the issues into song. And so what's been on your heart to proclaim 
Uh, wait, what have you been burdened to write about? It, it feels like everywhere you turn, every news headline is, 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 a, is, a, is like a, a bitter cry of, of wrath. Um, we're, it feels like we're in a cultural moment that feels very self-justified in, in condemnation, wrath and condemnation. And as a Christian, when you're living in this water, it, it you know, we recognize these things because we have words for them. The culture doesn't really, they, the culture's been stripped of God and spiritual language for quite some time. So words like sin don't mean anything anymore. Condemnation doesn't mean anything anymore. And the unintended consequence of that is grace doesn't mean anything anymore. Mm -hmm. The kindness of God coming towards an enemy doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, the goodness of Christ in the cross saying to people who are killing him, Father, forgive them. It just doesn't register because the language isn't there. So I guess, you know, in times maybe where there's a bit of complacency, a prophetic voice is needed. I, I felt maybe as of late that a more priestly voice is needed, a voice maybe that is saying, um, that, that is willing to just be quiet when, when other voices are shouting. And when you do speak, speak a word of, a word of grace and a word of, um, I guess a word of lament on behalf of a very hurting and broken culture and broken world. I guess the cry of Jeremiah, um, where he, he is looking around and he's seeing the culture and he's saying like, woe is me, Lord, when are you gonna come and fix this? I, I, I'm feeling more of that more than I'm feeling anything else, um, even, but they would have been a different answer a year ago. Would probably would have a different answer five months ago. I really do feel for the people who are called to preach right now. I mean, just feels like there, there's a firing squad on every side, and you just are kind of like, uh, what mine am I going to step on today? I mean, it's exactly yeah. Weird. John, thank you so much for spending time with us. Um, your work is is a gift to the church. It's a gift to the world. And thank and you, Jay. Your heart continues uh, to to share God's heart for His people and, and express our prayers. So, and it's great talking to you, man. Yeah, likewise, Jason. It is good to be with you digitally. Uh, my name is John. I'm Valerie. And uh, we have been with you guys, uh, like was mentioned, uh, for Christmas a couple times. And boy, what a wild time to be alive right now. Um, we just want to share a song with you about a, a different kind of world, a different kind of city, and a different kind of kingdom. It's a song we wrote called Kingdom of God. It goes like this. Oh, that I could see your face how I'm longing for that day brighter sun of holy grace make my heart a holy place blessed are the poor who have nothing to own blessed are the mourners are crying alone. Blessed are the guilty who have nowhere to go, for their hearts have a road to the kingdom of God, and the souls are the songs of the kingdom of God, and they will find a refuge. For this is the kingdom of God.
Is there somewhere I can stay Even just a couple days Oh, blessed are the poor Who have nothing to own Blessed are the mourners Who are crying alone Blessed are the Shall I want a cup running through?